We'll continue to explore arrays in this next program, so more stuff about arrays. That's what I'll call this project, and I'll also call the class Arrays More Stuff. I'll also be sure to pick up a free public static void main along the way. And fill in some documentation. Pause the video if necessary to do that yourself. We're going to learn more about arrays, including a good way to copy arrays. But we'll look at a bad way and a good way to copy an array. We can declare a reference to an array and actually create the new array all on one line if that's what we want to do. So if I'm going to make an array of cars sold, maybe for each day, I can use this int cars sold put the brackets equals new int and if it's 10 days of sales I'll put a 10 in there and so now we have a reference to an array and we actually created the array in memory all in one step I'm going to put some data in here immediately you can pause the video and make up your own numbers and I've got 10 elements all filled up and now we'll display the cars sold array I'm going to use an enhanced for loop here. I'll have int cr, and then I'll put colon, and then the name of my array, cars sold. So cr will go through the entire cars sold array and equal each element one at a time. And I'm just going to print out how many cars were sold each day. So again, CR will traverse or go through the entire array one at a time, equaling each element. And I'm going to display what CR is. And there we see all the cars that were sold each day. I should probably add a header to this because we're going to have some more information in this program. So I'll have cars sold array up here at the top of this so I know that's what it refers to. Now what if I declared an array of size 20, but only filled up the first 10 elements? Would that work? Yes, it does. Remember, ints by default have a value of 0. So all of those elements that I did not set equals or anything else myself still have a default value of 0. If this had been an object, such as a string, those would all have null. There would be nothing there. All right, let's create an array of bear names. I'll initialize this immediately, so I'm going to leave my brackets empty with string bear names, and then in braces, put a bunch of strings with names of bears, such as Yogi and Boo Boo, who both live at Jellystone Park. Poe from Kung Fu Panda. Baloo from The Jungle Book. Paddington Bear, who lives in England by way of darkest Peru. And Winnie the Pooh, he's in the Hundred Acre Wood. As well as Fuzzy Wuzzy. All bear names. Remember, Java is going to automatically determine the length of that array by counting how many elements we initialized. I'll copy that header down here to make sure I know that I'm displaying this bear names array. And once again, I'm going to apply an enhanced for loop to see every element. I'll do string nm colon bear names. So nm is going to equal every element inside the array bear names one at a time from start to finish. Again, this can be a good strategy when you don't really need to know what index number or subscript that an element has. So system.out.println nm, because nm is going to equal everything inside this array. And there are all of our bear names. I'll 
back that up one space. Now we're going to display a lot of string arrays in this program. So I'm going to create a method that will do that for us. So we don't have to keep typing these for loops. So public static void, I'll call it display array. And it's going to take a string array parameter. So notice how I have the brackets right after the word string in the parentheses in the parameter spot. That's the giveaway to Java that it's not a single string coming in. It's an array of strings coming in. I put that down there in my documentation as well. So I'm going to, again, loop through the array and display each element inside of it. So again, I'll use an enhanced for loop. You could also use a counter, that's all right. But I'll do string str colon arr because I made my parameter array arr, if you look back in the parentheses on line 51. So str will equal everything in the array that comes down into this display array method. And that's what I will print out, str. We'll add a little Java doc at the top to explain what's going on. This is specifically for string arrays, so I'll explain that that's what this is going to do. Display all the elements in a string array. And ARR is that array of strings that we're going to display. Well, now I can go back up to this loop where we were displaying all the bear names, get rid of it, and just simply activate the display array method. And we'll use for an argument, bear names. That is a string array, and that is what the display array method is expecting. So it runs the same, looks the same to the user, but it's going to save us a lot of time as we explore more with arrays. I'm going to create another array and set it equal to the first array. So I'll call this one, well, I'll start with string and then the empty brackets penguin names, and I'll simply set it equal to bear names. We'll see if this gets us a copy of the array. So I'll display the penguin names to see what happens. I can copy this code about the bear names, and I'm just going to change everything about bears to penguins. And, of course, save myself some time because we have this display array method all ready to go. This time I'll send it penguin names. And let's see what happens. The bear names are all the same as the penguin names. So at first glance it looks like we got an OK copy. But let's explore some more. Let's change one of the bear names. I'll take the bear name at index 2, which is, of course, the third bear name, and I'll change that to Smokey. You might anticipate that that would only change the name in the bear names array and have no impact on the penguin names array. But let's see both of them and see what happens. I'll copy and paste my way to display the bear names, and immediately underneath it, a way to display the penguin names. And when we run the program, hmm, there's the bear names, and there's Smokey in that two spot, and it's also in the two spot in penguin names. But I never said anything about penguin names having its second index change to Smokey. That's because we didn't really make a good deep copy. These two arrays, bear names and penguin names, are actually pointing to or referring to the same place in memory. It's the same array in memory for both of them. They both refer to that with their names. So any changes made by bear names is also going to affect penguin names because they're both pointing to the exact same place in memory. It would have been the same thing if we had changed a penguin name at index 2. It would have also impacted bear names because they are not really two separate arrays. It's two just two different names referring to the same array in memory. So we really didn't make a very good copy. 
it's still really one array with two different ways to refer to it. Bear names, penguin names. There is a way to make a good or deep copy of an array. We have to use a loop and copy each element over one by one by setting one part of an array equal to another part. So, I'll declare another array, string, and then the empty brackets, otter names. And I'll make it equal a new string. And I'll need, well, if I'm going to copy bear names, I'll need as many elements as bear names has. So bear names dot length will be the number of elements I also need for otter names. Remember, that's a number in there, bear names dot length. Next, I can use a loop so that one by one I set an index of otter names equal to the same index of bear names. But because I've used new, I've got a new object in memory. So I'll use int i equals zero. i is less than. It doesn't really matter which one you get the length from. I'll go with bear names dot length. They have equivalent lengths. And each time we go through this loop, we're going to copy the, uh, an element over. So otter names, and then with our brackets i, because that's our counter, equals bear names with bracket i. One by one, we set each index of otter names equal to bear names. But it's a new place in memory. They're not the same array. At first, they are going to be equivalent. But they're not the same array because they're in different places in memory. Let's check it out. We'll display the bear names and the penguin names. And I'll copy this again, but edit it so we can see the otter names. And when we run this, we'll see the, the remember this is after Smokey came into the picture. They all look the same right now. They've all got the same names. Yogi, Boo Boo, Smokey, Baloo, Paddington, Winnie the Pooh, and Fuzzy Wuzzy. All three of them have the same list of names. Let's go back up here and test out our copy. We're going to change one of the otter names and see if it makes any difference at all to the bear names or the penguin names. So I'll change the very first one at index 0, and I'll make it simply otter. Now let's run the program. And you can probably see right there, so bear names, first one is still Yogi, same for penguin names. But otter names, the first one is otter. Changing the first element in the otter names array had no impact on the bears and penguin names because they're a different array in memory. The otter names array was a new array in memory. It's a totally different location, so they are different arrays. And that's because we made a deep copy that we got that effect. 